Hi everyone, Phil from tech for Text. Today we're going to be looking at this from Aerocool. It's the Mirage 5. It's a CPU cooler with ARGB. It's got a recommended retail price of £44.99p. We do have links in the description below if you would like to click on them. They'll take you to the cheapest price available in your country. Okay, we're looking at this from Aerocool. It's their Mirage 5. It's one of their new Mirage range of products. It's a CPU ARGB air cooler PWM. It's got RGB addressable, infinity mirror, RGB design, delivers a memorizing look and feel to your PC build. So in basics, what they're saying is it's a cooler for a PC, which is straightforward. ARGB means addressable RGB. That means if you've got a motherboard, or a controller in your PC which is ARGB. You plug this into it and then it gives you some nice light effects and so forth. And the idea of the effects on this is basically you get this sort of ring effect, it goes inward, but because of the way it's designed it sort of like goes on forever. So it looks like it's, a, I don't know, probably deeper or longer than it actually is, but we'll have a look at that effect in a few minutes when we actually test it on a PC. Otherwise on the top so save money, cool better. On the side, gives you a shot of that effect uh, of the lighting, and there's your RGB cable, or what you would plug into your movable or addressable. That's the what's classed as a four pin, I call it a three pin minus one, because you can see it's got two pins there, miss one out, and then there's one, but it is actually classed as four pin, because it's a width of four pins. So that's pretty straightforward, and it says compatible with addressable motherboards. You've got a lot more information on the back, all the specifications as well as different languages. You've got base material, aluminium block, heat core, uh, touch technology, uh, aluminium or if you're American, aluminium. You've got heat pipes in there as well, it looks like 6mm times 5 Dimension is 100 millimeters by 145 millimeters, and the TDP, which is thermal design power, which is basically how hot of a CPU it can run on, is 150, and it works on pretty much most common motherboards uh, from Intel and AMD. So that's including LGA, 2066, 2011. 1200, 1150X, which is obviously the 1150, 515, and so forth, and then even 775, AMD, FM1, FM2, AM2, AM2+, plus, AM3, AM3+, plus, and AM4, and then it's got a fan, uh, speed rating is 1500 to 3000 RPM, and it's got a few other bits on there, but uh, uh, you can read that information on the description above. Otherwise, on the next size, it shows you the base. As you can see, the heat pipes touch the actual bottom, which obviously comes in contact with your CPU. And then, obviously, you can see the fins as well. So that's pretty good. I'm going to say, it doesn't look like there's a fan in there, in all honesty. Um, but, yeah, the, there is a fan inside, because, obviously, it gives out fan specifications. Uh, it looks like it's going to be similar to some of the older... Uh, ones what we used to see more of a turbine effect uh, than usual so the fans on the inside and blows the air outwards and sucks it in from underneath or at least that's how I'm guessing until we have a look at it okay so this is what's inside the box it looks like there's a lot but half of these bits you probably won't be using because some are for one type of motherboard and not others and so forth for example this is for a socket 2011 so if you're not using socket 2011 you're not going to use them and obviously you've got fittings for standard intel you've got the black plates as well this is the cable which will attach to the rgb uh, cable coming out of the cooler and then plug into your motherboard or your rgb controller or should i say addressable rgb controller and then you've got some more fittings which are specifically for amd so obviously if you're only wanting to use a standard intel fitting you're only actually going to need those and minus one of the back plates oh there's just one black plate in there which is reversible depending on uh, what you're using it for 
You do have a manual, tells you how to do all the fittings, everything's in there. Obviously, I suggest you check that before you put it together to make sure you're putting the right fittings on the right type of motherboard. If you don't know what type of motherboard you're fitting it to and what socket it is, I suggest you get someone else to do this for you. Uh, for example, your local independent store. Otherwise, go ahead at your own risk. Right, let's have a look at the cooler itself, what we can see. So, side on, let's have a look. You can see it there. You, depending on the angle I hold it at, you can see there's sort of a big black chunk halfway through. That is the fan or looks more like a turbine to me. Um, you can just about see it on the bottom. It's really hard to see in all honesty because it's really dark in there. You've got your plate on the bottom which is aluminium but obviously you've got the copper from the heat pipes running through it and there are five heat pipes. Let's just peel that off. There you go. It looks like quite a smooth-ish finish. One or two imperfections on there, but nothing what a bit of thermal paste is not going to sort out. Uh, looking at the top, it looks dirty to begin with, to be honest with you, but it's not. It's just a slight little bit of plastic they've got over the top to protect the effect basically so don't forget to take that off otherwise it's going to look a bit of a mess so it gives you a rough idea not much to see you can just see the aero cool and you can see sort of the ring effect going downwards and if you actually take this top bit off and look inside all you can actually see is a mirror so it gives you an idea how it's working if you look and this is before the lights are even on it looks like there's loads of rings of lights going all the way down. But as soon as you take that off, all you see is a mirror. It's just the effect, basically. It's basically where the mirror reflects, basically, the, the light and so forth. It's a bit like when you get a web camera and point it at a screen and you've got all those continuous uh, people or the same person or whatever you're looking at on the web camera goes on constantly and it's the same sort of thing uh, but obviously they're using mirrors that's not the highest tech um, thing to do but it can be quite effective if you have got your lighting right which it looks like they may have looking at the box art but otherwise it's pretty straightforward you've got your cable what you plug into your fan connection it is a four pin one which is a pwm which basically means it allows the motherboard or what you're plugging it into which should be the motherboard um, to adjust the fan speed depending on um, how fast it needs to go depending on how the cpu is working for example if your cpu is really hot it'll make the fan go even faster uh, but that will produce a little bit of noise we will do full testing on this shortly Okay, down to testing. In basics, all testing is done on the same machine, with the same version of Windows, with the same version of programs. We disable internet access, so no programs, updates, or anything can be installed or updates what can affect any of the results. All background tasks which are non-essential get disabled, so again, they will not affect the testing. The testing room has air conditioning slash heaters built in to keep the temperature at 18.5 degrees Celsius. Also, decibel levels are at a steady 45.6 decibels. When testing things like fans, we set the speeds at 50% and 100% and not auto, because obviously if you've got something set at auto, it will adjust the fan speed up and down to adjust the temperature to the optimal temperature, so it can affect results. So we set the fan speeds at set uh, speeds like 50% and 100%. All testing is done on a 10700K i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM, as well as a FiCuda SSD and the same motherboard and all the other components are the same for every single test. Full specifications are in the description. Okay, one of the things to bear in mind before we go directly into the test results is this cooler is designed about the looks. It's TDP, which is basically the maximum amount of power it can basically cool down from a processor is 150. The processor we use in the 10700K is actually 147, so it's right on that edge. And again, this cooler is more designed for looks rather than being the highest performer in the world. But saying that, you'll see from these results, it doesn't perform badly. So in this first test, we check the idle temperature. That's when Windows is basically sitting there doing nothing with the fan running at 
speed and again the temperatures are in degrees celsius and as you can see there it averaged around about 22 degrees celsius which is very similar to what most of the others are doing on this next test it's the full load temperature so basically we make the machine do as much work as possible basically making the processor run at 100 percent so it's working as hard as possible and we set the fan speed at 50 percent here it gets 78 degrees while not the best result as you can see it's a lot better than going down the route of an intel stock cooler or the uh, jelly tranquilo 4 we tested in the past on this slide, we'll basically do the same test again, but this time up the fan speed to 100%. And again, the tests are run over an average of 30 minutes. So it gives you a rough idea. And we've got 70 degrees Celsius here on the cooler, so it does perform better when the fan is going faster. Uh, so it keeps up uh, with the rest of the pack. Don't get me wrong, it's not as cool as some of them out there, but again, the price is a lot lower than most of them out there as well. On this next slide, we overclock. So we overclock the processor to 5.1 gigahertz. Unfortunately, this causes uh, the machine to lock up, freeze, or crash while doing the testing. So unfortunately, we were able, unable to get results from this. So I wouldn't advise this cooler for overclocking, or at least not the i7, because the temperatures are just going to get too high. So the next few tests are to do with decibel levels. That's basically how loud the actual cooler is in comparison to the room. Uh, the average levels in the room are 45.6 decibels. And as you can see here, with the fan running at 50% speed, we're getting 49 decibels, which is actually one of the better readings we got about out of all the coolers beating the arctic freezer 50 and arctic usually aim their products to be really quiet so it gives you a rough idea on this next test again we do the same thing but this time the fan speed is set at 100 percent so it's as loud as it'll get and it averaged 57 decibels again this time it came joint first with the gelled tranquillo 4 but it actually performs a lot better than the cooler. So it's actually one of the quietest coolers we've tested, uh, and it actually performs pretty well for a quiet cooler, in all honesty. So in conclusion, is a CPU cooler any good? Well, if you're wanting the looks and you want to team it up, especially with their other Mirage products, like the Mirage 12 Pro kit were reviewed, then this is a perfect product. But if you're planning on going down the route of overclocking or using a processor what's got a, a rating of 150 TDP or over, you're going to probably struggle a little bit. This 10700 at max temperature run at 70 degrees. Bear in mind, max temperature is when we're running the machine flat out at 100% and in most cases most people's CPUs never hit that much usage so that's 70 degrees uh, it's hitting at its maximum but again this product is designed more around its looks than its cooling capacity but saying that it is able to cool hell of a lot better than an Intel stock cooler and a lot of the other coolers on the market. So if you're wanting a cooler which is better than a stock cooler but has hell of a lot of looks and you can team up with other RGB products as well, like as I said the Mirage 12 Pro kit, then this probably is the CPU for you. But again, if you are overclocking and stuff like that, I'd probably give it a miss. Overall, we do recommend this product mainly because of its looks.